Well. So it's looking like there could be more changes to the cars this year than we initially thought. Pull rod suspension could be back. And in case you didn't know, it's a fairly different system to the push rod system that's been on the front of the majority of cars since about 2010. So why is it back and what will it change for the new cars? Well, as ever, we've got Scarbs back to explain and he was actually one of the first people to spot this on Twitter out of McLaren's social media footage and that's a story that needs explaining. Obviously, none of the teams want to reveal anything about their new cars yet as it would give away potential secrets to the other teams and with the season still a little way away, any competitor could copy or take inspiration and still get it on a working car for the first race. But McLaren have been braver than most, posting images of very up close stuff on the car or footage with the car hidden. But Scarb spotted a couple of things that gave it away and it was really interesting to see it all play out on Twitter. The first one was just looking up the, the bare chassis. Um, and from that I could tell, because of the way the regulations have changed, that they hadn't packaged any space to put the, the springs and dampers on top of the chassis as we've seen for so many years now. Um, but the real killer, because I, I kind of called it at that point, but there was a, a second video and you saw uh, Zach taking photos of the car during the fire up and zooming into his phone in a, a, a very Hollywood movie style enhance uh, Photoshop setup, you could actually see the front suspension. You could see the pull rod going down towards the chassis. And that really, that really is kind of, for me, is proving it. So that's all pretty cool. The team just considering switching to something pretty different. And it's not just McLaren either. It's rumored that Ferrari and Alpine are too, but we'll know for sure at pre-season testing. Everyone has got theories as to who is and who isn't. Um, going to be running front pull rod or uh, front uh, push rod. None of that is based on any images other than just people either guessing or saying that they know someone at the factory that's told them. Now the teams have been running either pull rod or push rod suspension since the early 80s and that's because it's a light and strong system whilst also being easy to package. So how does it work? Well the current cars so from around 2010 up to now have used predominantly push rod suspensions on the front of the cars. This is where the wheel mounted to the upright pushes a push rod. So from the bottom wishbone the upright pushes a rocker that rotates and translates all that force to be horizontal to the springs and the dampers inside the car. You know like if you see an aerial atom and the suspension's all out in the wind this means they can tuck it up inside the car and keep the aerodynamics neat. Where a pull rod suspension is essentially that push rod suspension but flipped upside down. So the pull rod is pulled from the top upright which then pulls a spring and damper system, which is now mounted in the bottom of the car, again, inside the tub. But what's mad is that conventionally, cars run push rod suspension on the front of the car and pull rod on the rear. So let me pass you over to Scarbs to explain. The key thing that has been running all the way up until last season, 2021, as it was, is they would run push rod at the front, which means from the wheels, you have a rod going up this direction to the top of the chassis, where all the springs and the dampers and the rockers do all the clever stuff. Um, at the back, you've got pull rod, and that swapped around about 2009. Red Bull were the first people to go back to rear pull rod. And in that situation, and you see the little um, rods actually coming down, now from the wheel down towards the center of the car under the gearbox to move the springs and dampers. And the reason you have one at the front and a different one at the back um, is just packaging. And a lot of what we'll talk about is just how these package slightly differently. And the front of the car is quite different to the shape of the car at the back because of aerodynamics. So it's packaging and aero is the key reasons. So at the front of the car, going from push rod to pull rod, a lot of people are going to tell you this is a really big factor and it really going to alter the handling of the car and the characteristics of the car. That's all rubbish. That's just not the case. It's just a packaging and an aero thing. The reason that's changed this year, there's about three or four rule changes that have affected it. First of all, you've got the much larger wheels, which gives you a bit more space. Um, but also, all of the suspension mounts need to be inside the wheel now. So previously, last year, you saw brackets and bits and pieces coming out of the wheel. That's all banned under the new regulations. Then the shape of the, the well not the nose, the footwell section between where the, the nose bolts to the cockpit uh, used to kind of like bulge up and go flat. Now it has to slope up. And that area at the very tip of that wedge is where you would normally put the springs of the dampers. There's not space for them now. So what you can do is you can put them at the bottom of the nose and then, then you have the pull rod comes down and operates the springs and dampers down there. And there's other packaging uh, options that you've got here. But really this is all about just deciding 
where do you want to put the pivot in order to get the best angle down to the rockers and where do you want then the weight of the springs and the dampers. Now as well as aero there has to be a difference in the weight distribution. F1 teams go to insane lengths to move weight downwards things like the tiny clutch as an example. So my initial thoughts are that this could be to move weight downwards to lower the center of gravity just a tiny bit. I mean if you're moving the suspension system from up high in the tub to underneath surely that's going to have a difference. In terms of weight there's not really any overall difference between the two, pull rod potentially could be a little bit heavier because of, uh, I won't get into the technicalities, but because its top wishbone needs to be a little bit stronger, but the weight is much lower down. So it kind of swings and roundabouts. Push rod tends to be that little bit lighter and tends to have a slightly higher center of gravity, but there's lots of things you can do in between to play about with them. Now there's a lot of discussion about which system, pull rod or push rod is better. And I'm sure you could argue either way, but it seems that the main motivation for this change isn't actually to do with suspension at all. I mean, the key driving factor is just the change in the regulations of where you've got space to package things. Um, in terms of the external shape that you would have of the nose and of the front of the chassis, that wouldn't be different between pull rod or push rod. There's no real difference. So this could allow teams to play with the shape of the nose, which has a decent effect on the aerodynamics of the entire car. Moving the suspension underneath could allow for more freedom up top, but it could also come with the downside of compromising the underneath. And as we know, this is going to be really important, especially this year. So as we mentioned, teams have done this in the past, played around with pull rod at the front of their cars. Red Bull, Ferrari and McLaren all tried it back in around 2010. I think it's one of the reasons Ferrari moved away from this um, in the early sort of 2010s when they were running pull rod at the front of the car. Um, but also having the pull rod that direction to that direction um, also has an aero effect and you can use the shape of the pull rod to shape the airflow going into the underfloor. So I think there is potentially a small aero advantage. Now one thing to be sure of is that it won't make much of a performance difference either way, at least from a suspension perspective, but it could allow clever aero tricks, but who knows? In my opinion, with pull rod, but I don't think it's a night and day difference. It's just putting a bit of body work in, a bit of, in an area where that you used to have barge boards and other bits and pieces. So it's just teams playing about with the packaging to get what they want out of the setup. Um, and uh, you know, externally, there won't be much other difference other than you know, the angle of the rod. Now in the discussion on Twitter, once Scarves discovered this, people had some concerns about the system, mainly about the ease of adjustment and about the pull rod systems potentially causing understeer. Uh, at the moment, you've had all the suspension on the top of the car and any adjustments are quite easily accessible. Having them down at the bottom means that you've got to kind of put your arms deep inside the chassis or have a lie underneath the chassis to get access to them. That is a little bit more difficult, but in the real terms, the teams don't play about with the suspension much. That's all normally completely buttoned down in simulations before the car even gets to the track. And when certainly when Ferrari and McLaren ran these, um, it was just a little bit trickier. But again, in real terms, for a mechanic that's having to deal with all the other complexity of a Formula One car, it's not too much of an issue. I think what a lot of other people think about is that pull rod uh, provides some kind of tendency to understeer. Um, to make the front of the, the front axle not grip as well. And this is kind of anecdotal because Ferrari struggled with it in the 2010s, as did McLaren. I think those issues are you know, nothing to do with the, the angle that the rod is going from suspension to the, to the uh, uh, inboard springs and dampers. This is just, you know, there's lots of other factors there. And if you look back, cars always used to have pull rod at the front and if you still have them at the back and we don't have any problems with the back of the car. So I think this is just kind of those people that are seeing um, a characteristic of those particular two cars and pointing it as the pull rod. Really, it makes no difference. And I don't think we would see any obvious difference in you know, front end grip this year with the teams that are running pull rod to those that are running push rod. Now, I'm sure all of us F1 tech nerds are stoked to see which of these systems comes out on top this year. I know I certainly am. You should check out this whole playlist of videos where we explain everything you need to know about these new F1 cars. Thanks very much to Scarves for joining us again. You should follow him on Twitter. And thank you to you guys for watching and subscribing. And we'll catch you in the next one.